Donna from Olivia and Marie Create. Welcome to my sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little pot holder. Let's take a look at the things you'll need. First you need some fabrics for your backing. This is, needs to be about 11 by 7 inches and it can be a plain piece or it can be a stitched piece like mine. This is also a good time you can uh, practice some new quilting techniques, piecing techniques, or maybe even use some of your scraps. One piece is going to be on the back and the other piece will show here in your lining. Now you'll also need some wadding in the same size. You need two pieces of just plain leftover quilting wadding and you'll also need a special piece of insulated wadding. I've used Insulbrite. Uh, this protects your hands from the heat. Moving to the front, to the pockets, you need four pieces of fabric here, and these pieces will all be six by seven inches. You can have solid pieces or pieced pieces like I've done. You can see I like my curves, so I've used those again for the front here. And two of the solid pieces will be used for the lining inside. You also need some wadding to protect your hands there, and that can just be plain wadding left over from quilting. A couple of other pieces of fabric that you'll need. You need some bias binding, about 30 inches, and I've made mine about two and a quarter inches wide and folded it in half and ironed it out. I know bias binding is a little bit more difficult to make than straight edge binding, but believe me, it's worth it when you start going around the corners of this pot holder. You also need two short little six inch pieces of binding and that's going to be the bottoms of your pockets. The last piece of fabric you're going to need for this is a little two inch by six inch piece of fabric that you're going to fold in half and in half again. That's going to be the loop that you can hang this from. The last thing you'll need is your templates. Now you can download these from the Sew Mama Sew website. And remember, this pot holder is really designed for sort of small to medium hands. If you're lucky enough, like my mom, to have really long fingers, you might want to increase the size a bit. But otherwise, when you're printing out, make sure you have your scale set at 100%. If you have any questions about how to change the scale of the pot holder, just drop a comment in the comment box on my website. Let's get started. Now we're going to put together our quilt sandwich for the back of the pot holder. You start with one of your large pieces of fabric, doesn't matter which one. Then you add a layer of the regular wadding. Smooth it all out nicely and take away any threads. The wadding is a magnet for the threads. Next you add your insole bright. It doesn't matter which way you put it. There's no back or front according to the instructions. Then you put your last layer of wadding and you top that off with your other large piece of fabric. Now, before we quilt these, we need to baste them together. For a bigger project, I normally stitch base because I hate pinning, spending hours safety pinning. But for a small project like this, I just use safety pins because it's pretty quick and I don't have to spend so much time safety pinning. You need to pin about three inches apart and make sure you smooth it as you go. Be sure to check every now and then that it's still smooth underneath and that nothing has shifted too much. Okay, I'm going to finish this and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. Okay, we're ready to start quilting. Before we do, make sure you have your walking foot attached like I have here and turn your stitch length up to about 3.5. As you can see I've also added some contrasting thread because I like the pop of the contrasting thread. Now I'm going to use my walking foot and I'm just going to do some gentle curves to kind of match the gentle curving of the piecing. Just ease your walking, your fabric through the walking foot and let it take the fabric. Don't really try to go faster with the fabric than the walking foot. Gently guide it. Okay, there you go. 
and you can quilt as much or as little as you like. I'm going to do a little bit more on this one and then we can look at the um, pockets. Now we're going to make our quilt sandwich for our front pockets. You start with the lining fabric face down on the table. You take one piece of your wadding, put that on top of it, and then you take the top piece that's going to show on your pocket and you put that down on top of it. Again, we're going to baste it together with the safety pins and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine. This is a favorite quilting tool of mine, painter's tape. Um, the painter's tape will help us keep a straight line when we're quilting. This is a great registration line for quilting. You can take it right off and it won't have any effect on your fabric. I'm going to line up my tape here with this inside edge of my walking foot and that will help me keep a straight line. Okay, now it's really simple. You just quilt and allow the walking foot to pull the fabric. Just guide it gently to make sure stay straight along that registration line of the tape. I like to have a variety of amounts of space between my lines because I think it looks more interesting. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space here as you can tell. I'll use that to sort of eye up as my straight line and I'm going to do another line over here. As you can see I finished doing all the orange lines on both pockets. Um, and I started in the middle, like I showed you, quilted from top to bottom all the way to the right, then went back and quilted all the way to the left from top to bottom. I did that on both pieces and now I've changed to my yellow thread. I'm going to go in back in and put some extra lines using my yellow thread. Remember, if you want to quilt with randomly spaced lines, the key to making it look interesting is to have, first of all, variety, so you want to have different sizes and also to have contrast, some really big gaps and some smaller gaps. I'm going to go back in and do the same thing again with the yellow lines and I'll meet you back at the table. Now that we've finished quilting all of our pieces, we're going to use our template to cut out the pieces. Right, I'm going to show you two different methods that you can use to cut out your template pieces. The first one uses an acrylic quilting ruler and a drunkard's path ruler. I don't know if you can see it because it's quite clear, but it's a curved drunkard's path uh, template shape. First thing is, I'm gonna cut out the curve edge using the rotary cutter and the straight acrylic ruler, okay? I'm only doing one half of this this way. I'll, I'll do the other half in the other method that I'm going to show you. Right, then you take your curved drunkard's path ruler and you use that as a guide just to kind of protect your fingers. I'm very risk averse so I don't like to just use a piece of paper template with my rotary cutter. Now if you wanted you could also cut out your template on a piece of cardboard or something stronger and then you wouldn't necessarily need to use a dr drunkard's path ruler uh, template to protect yourself. Then you can just ease it round. It's pretty forgiving, this template, so even though I'm kind of cutting through some of the paper, that doesn't really matter. It'll all even out once we do, I have to turn it, once we do our binding, okay? Once you get to the edge there, you can go back to your straight ruler turn it this way so I can be safe. Okay, and you could cut all along this straight edge using your straight ruler as a guide. Now, the other way I like to do this, and be careful you have to press really hard because there are so many layers here. The other way that I like to do this is to use my erasable pen that I talked about earlier and just trace this shape. So I'm going to trace the shape 
around the template. It looks like my shape slipped, my cutting slipped a little bit. My ruler slipped a little bit here. I'm going to tidy that up. I'm going to trace this shape around here. And then I'm going to get my scissors. So as you can see, I'm trimming along the line that I drew for the template. One thing I will do before I do the binding, and I'll show you when we get to the machine, I'm going to stitch right around the edge here. Because as you can see, I haven't used a straight line quilting on this, and the quil quilting is kind of going in and out. Just to hold that down neatly when I'm doing my binding, I want to have a nice even row of stitching all around the edge of this.